Hello guys, welcome to your CCNA 200-301. And in this lesson, we're going to discuss what IP addresses are. We'll look at the versions of IP addresses, look at the classes of IP addresses, and finally, we'll briefly look at the types of addresses that makes up each class. My name is George Boateng Bamfo. We'll start with a brief definition for IP addressing. So IP addressing, according to Wikipedia, is a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a computer network that uses the internet protocol for communication. So this is a very long definition in my opinion. So I would just say IP addresses represent the names given to devices in order for them to be identified and communicated to. What do I mean? So when we take a PC, say PC1, and another PC, PC2. So in order for PC1 to communicate with PC2, there need to be some standard name given to PC1 for PC2 to be able to identify it and also send information to it and also receive information from it. So let's assume I decide to give this PC the name Alice and give this PC the name Bob. So from this analogy, we can say Alice and Bob in this case, represents the addresses of these machines. And that's the concept of IP address. It's just the standard way of assigning labels to devices in order for them to be efficient in communication and also be able to receive information from other users. We have two main versions of IP addresses. We have the IPv4 addressing and IPv6 addressing. And in this session, we're going to discuss what IPv4 addressing is. So IPv4 addressing, we're going to look at the structure of IPv4 addressing. So IPv4 addressing are made up of four numbers. So let's represent the four numbers with four boxes because we don't know what the numbers are and we don't know which format these numbers are supposed to be in. The next thing, is that IPv4 addresses range from the number zero to 255. So let's assume we're going to put 120 here. Let's put seven here because they say four numbers, random numbers between zero to 255, zero here and a one. Okay, we also know IPv4 addresses are separated. The numbers are separated with dots. So two numbers separated with dots, two numbers separated with dots. And two numbers separated with dots. So if we bring this down, excluding the boxes, we can say this number is 20.7.0.1. And this represents an IPv4 address. So basically, an IPv4 address is made up of four numbers ranging from 0 to 255. It cannot go beyond 255. And then also, between two numbers, we have a dot. The next thing we're going to look at is the classes of IPv4 addresses. So here, when we talk about classes of IP addresses, we're referring to IPv4 addresses. So we have five main types of IPv4 addresses. We have a class A, we have a class B, we have a class C, we have a class D, and we have a class E. Now, we have class A to E, but what makes up a class A address? What makes up a class B address? What makes up a class C? What makes up a class D? What makes up a class E? Before this slide, we made mention that IPv4 addresses are made up of four numbers. And these four numbers are in four positions. In order for you to determine a class of an address, you look at the first number. If the number falls within one, two, one, two, seven, we say it's a class A. If the first number falls within the range of one, two, eight to one, nine, one, we say it's a class B. If it falls within one, nine, two to two, two, three, we say it's a class C. And if the first number of your IP address falls within 
224239, we say it's a class D. And if for some reasons you find anywhere, an IP address starts with 240 or up to 255, we say it's a class E. So in order for you to determine the class of an IPv4 address, the only thing you need to know is what the first number is. Again, IPv4 addresses are made up of four numbers, but in order to determine the classes, you look at the first number. These four numbers of numbers in the four positions, each position is referred to as an octet. We'll come back to that in subsequent lessons. Another important thing about the classes which I mentioned earlier on was the various types of addresses that make up each class. So if you could look at the slide on our right hand, on our left hand side, we could see that these addresses have been grouped into some formats. So we have class A to C kind of grouped together. We have class D standing alone and class E also standing alone. The idea of class A to class C is what we refer to as unicast. So let's assume unique means one and cast means some form of communication. So let's say in unicast addresses, if we have an address, so let's assume 10.0.0.1, this address, IP address, can be assigned to this machine. If we have another IP address, 10.0.0.2, this address can be assigned to this machine, which means that every machine has its own IP address. And the idea of assigning an IP address to a machine is what we refer to as the unicast addressing. So one IP address for one machine makes that particular address a unicast address in this sense. So any IP address from class A to class C is a unicast address, meaning when we pick one address, we assign it to a machine. The next one, which is the class D, is what we refer to as a multicast. Multi, so multiple. Meaning if we have, let's assume we have two machines, and these two machines are all listening to or having this kind of roughly assigned this number, maybe 10, 10, 12. So 2, 2, 4, 10, 10, 12. What we're saying is just like you have your WhatsApp group, you already have your IP address, which is a unicast address. It's just like you having your phone number. But then if you join a WhatsApp group, any information sent to this number, anybody in that WhatsApp group receives it. So the idea of unicast addresses is single addresses for each machine, but the idea of multicast addresses, having one IP address, which is communicating on behalf of multiple machines. So in the case of WhatsApp, let's assume this is WhatsApp. Someone here sends a message to 224.10.10 the 12, and because these guys are part of 224.10.10.12 group, they receive the message. If it's supposed to be a unicast message, it sends it directly to them, but if it's sent to 224.10.10.12, it's sent to everybody in that group. And that's what unicast addresses are, and also multicast addresses are. The last one will be what we refer to as the reserved range. So this particular range is reserved for what they refer to as research purpose. So it's beyond the scope of this class. So all we're going to be looking at will be class A, B, and C, which are going to be assigned for our machines when we're dealing with our networks. And also we look at some multicast addresses for other technologies and purposes in our lecture. So in this lesson, we looked at what IP addresses are, and I mentioned that IP addresses are just labels given to devices, just so we can identify and also exchange information between two devices. We also looked at the versions of IP 
with IP addresses. And I mentioned that we have two main versions of IP addresses. We have the IPv4 addresses, and we have IPv6 addresses. We also moved on to look at the structure of an IPv4 address. We said IPv4 addresses are made up of four numbers and the numbers range between zero and 255. And also for each number, we say that between two numbers, that's what we refer to as the dots. So we can see classically, we have 10, 0, 0, 1, which are four numbers and we have the dots to separate two numbers. We finally looked at the various types of addresses that makes up each class. So we also mentioned class A, B, and C are unicast addresses, which means that if we pick an IP address, we can assign that to a machine. And for class D addresses, we, we said class D addresses are multicast addresses, and these addresses are assigned to groups or assigned to a group of machines. So we gave an analogy with WhatsApp saying every, for every person has a phone and a number, but then you can also admit people into groups on WhatsApp. So if we send a message to a group on WhatsApp, anybody in that group received it, receive this message on their individual machines. And this is the concept of multicast, having individual IP addresses, which are unicast addresses. So here we had unicast addresses, and then also we have a multicast address, which sends a message to all the participants in the group. My name is George Panfo, and I'll see you in our next lesson. Thank you.